Tenderness in me increased in every day. That woman lost everything she had to fight for my papers. One year, three months. I did not bother about what she went through. After I got my papers, I got to this passport. I divorced her. She lost her job, lost everything. She was almost mentally ill. And I didn't bother. The devil took my heart. Because God has given me a reprobate mind. Continue with your effort. When you go I will let you know. You will let me know. And you know what? I continue in our wickedness. I began to push towards her. That was the next step. When I began to push towards her, thousands begin to die. Come back to Nigeria. Carry beautiful girls that are my girlfriends. After sleeping with them, you drop cocaine for them to swallow. One, one kilo of cocaine. Each of the girls, they will break up on us to drop it down. Swallowing one kilo of cocaine. All of them. They to get, get their visa, go to the airport, and the flight is cancelled. When the flight is cancelled, the Bible says that if the foundation is destroyed, what can the device do? When the flight is cancelled, and you have one kilo to get in your tummy, what will you do? You are gone. You are finished. That is how several girls died. And really threat was killing people without conscience. A lot of people were dying for my sake. I never bothered. And you know what? He still show mercy on whom he wants to show mercy on. I don't care how many people have killed. I have chosen you to be an apostle for of this generation. I don't care how many that hate me today. I have repented for my evil. Today, I stand instead of Jesus. And I stand the full part of Apostle Paul. Who is that man that we have to work on and degree? They have not gone that person. That's why you see me today seeking for change. I am asking for change. When you change, all things shall work my way. And all things shall become new. And if these girls succeeded in passing through the airport, then to Skipo Airport in Holland, and somebody came over there, come over there, collected the drugs from them, before selling one kilos, minimum 10 people will die. When you go to Brixton, London, Tambora, Thames Mead, Woolwich, Thames, all those South East London where the black people, Nigerians are called the lizards. When you go there, you see how people are dying on daily basis. Not everything they will tell you on TV, so you think that UK is very nice. No, things are going on. Nigerians like me are causing this problem, I'm telling you. People were dying, and sometimes we go to Spain, go to Holland, pick up a white woman and a husband with their five children, send them to South America to go and import cocaine. When they get there, what we tell them to go and bring is designer wears, not drugs. We don't tell them the truth. Can you lock down that key, sir? Thank you, sir. Please. When you tell them to go and bring designer wears, they will go over there believing that they are going to bring designer wears. Seven family members will lodge in a hotel. And now we sit home in London or in Sweden or any country where I want because I am a Swedish citizen. I travel anywhere I want to receive my money or receive the draw, wherever I want to. I was filled with iniquity. In abomination, I was fashioned. Everything about me was immorality. There is nothing good about me. I was totally worn out and finished. I was supposed to be in grave right now. But the mercy of God and His grace found me just as I am, empty-handed, but alive in his hand. And he has come here today for your sake. My brother, when that family get there, they will bring you two bags each, three, three kilos, from four, four kilos of Ghana in the bags. All of them came back with 14 bags as they are coming, get to the Heathrow airport, they will be arrested because what they are carrying, the dog has sniffed it out. If the dog didn't see it, they might have a sophisticated machine in that airport that will detect as a substance in that bag that make the bag deform somehow. And they will say, bring that bag out. Bring the other bags too. Bring this one. 14 bags out. Who are the owners? Trace the name. Family, mother, father, sons, daughters inside the prison. And I'm sitting there waiting for them. Two days, I did not see them. I will make a phone call. Get me another bird. Because we call them bird. You know, bird that flies. That's what we call them. Wicked names that we form by ourselves. What are you talking about Lucifer? How do you think Lucifer looks like? He looks like this. <laughs> you think he has a special look? No. no. We are the Lucifer, except the blood of Jesus comes in and do the sanctification to us. Oh. Lucifer. That's what you are. Until you surrender it all to him and change, then your life will change. Everything will change. My brothers, so many people died in that way in the prison. 
and when the drugs of them coming in, the Jamaicans, the Gambians, the Senegalese, I'll give them one kilo. They will take one kilo, give it for 5,000 pounds, and pour deadly powders inside, mix it up, start to go to the street and sell them. Their children will be selling and killing people at the same time. My brother, thousands have died for my sake. And the highest number of them will have from those that use the drug. Because when you sniff cocaine or heroin, your life is no longer the same. You are a dead man walking. Don't think if you are using drugs here, I'm telling you, walk out from today. Because we are going to pray the prayer that will sanctify you today. Today. But if you continue using it, consider yourself a dead man, you're not a living man. So you know. Drug is not good for you. Whether you are selling it, I tell my Anambra people, you know, from Mune, with people that love money more than human beings. That's where I came from. That money made me to misbehave big time. I tell my people when I was having a crusade in the I said that drug is a bad thing. You don't do it. One of them said, nah, how about that, you know, drug is business. That's what he told me. Nah, how about that, make me leave that, the drug is business. Do you know that this December, that guy I'm talking about is dead now? You don't talk like that, you are blaspheming. Blasphemy is not only when you speak against the Holy Spirit, it's when you talk against my word. Because he has given me the word I spoke. And when I say you are sanctified, and somebody says, no, you are not, that person is bound to go to grave. That is the authority we carry. You say that I have given you kings and priests. We are the kings and priests. So when they, they, they pass a decree, you as a priest will come and nullify it. Because you are priest. That priestly authority is higher than the kingly authority. When Buhari says something and you go on your knees in front of your altar, the God of mercy will show up and will say, My son, what LAT? Why are you crying? I say, Buhari said that you want to finish me. Okay, I will take him out for your sake. God said, I will let it go and alter it, destroy Amalekites. It doesn't mean that he's a wicked God. He is still a righteous God. When he kills, we call it righteous killing. When you and I kill, we call it murder. And we go to jail. Our God cannot go wrong. Today, he said, shall the lawful captive be delivered? Yes. Many said no, including me. He said, even, even the unlawful captive, lawful captive, the prayer of the mighty, he said that they shall be delivered. Today, deliverance has come in Mount Zion, and you shall possess your possession. Obediah 117, I will grant you mercy, I will show you mercy. The love of God shall shine upon your life. You will not remain the same, even in the name of Jesus. My brother, after the whole process, one day, God said to me, my son, walk away from your wicked ways or you'll be destroyed. I did not listen. I was arrested after that. It's a long process. I was arrested with 1.5 kilo cocaine. My boy was going somewhere. I saw him waiting for the bus. He jumped into the car. He jumped into the car. When he jumped in, he jumped in, of course, with 1.5 kilo cocaine. He cannot be between outside and jump in, Abby. He jumped in with cocaine. Not knowing that four vehicles has been monitoring me for four years in Sweden. I was driving my Bugatti, Maserati, looking good. The following footballers, the Slatan Ibrahimovic, were shining in Stockholm, sleeping with the big girls, the singers, they had in Stockholm, thinking that I was a big girl, not knowing I was an idiot, a chicken, for that matter. On that fateful day, they grabbed me. When they arrested me, my two hands became one, and they formulated all kinds of things, forged all kinds of things. And they slammed me to start 15 years. I did not even alter works. I know I was a criminal. No argument, nothing to discuss. When he said to me, when he said to me, Christian, do you have anything to say? I said, fuck you. That's all I could say to judge. Can you see the level of illiteracy I'm talking about? That was how high my illiteracy was. I said to the judge, fuck you. And that's how they he slammed me with that 15 years. No mercy. Then after eight years in the prison. The mercy of God came. There's something happened while I was there. While I was inside prison, I loved to watch pornographic movies. Those movies that I watch, no ordinary man sleeping with women. I'm watching animals sleeping with girls. That is hardcore pornographic movie. These ones are not permitted to be sold anywhere in Europe or in America. They will smuggle it from Russia, from Poland, from Czechoslovakia. Slovenia. That's where we smuggle such movie. 
inside the prison will let us and they import the movies for us. And we sit down there watching dogs and horses destroying some of our girls inside the inside that movie. Inside that that very day, one black lady, I don't want to say the time they come from, I don't want to offend anybody. That lady sat, was, was tied at the belly of a horse. You know how high horse is? They tied the baby, the girl there, and that horse was trying to push the penis inside this girl. Finally, succeeded, and the girl fainted. That's how I myself almost passed out. I reacted from the direction of the girl. My elbow hit my remote control on my bed. That's how the channel changed. When the channel changed, I saw good channel, Crayfield Dollar Jr. was there. And he was saying, renew your mind or you will die. Renew your mind or you will die. Renew your mind or you will die. Don't change that channel. Renew your mind. My brother, since that day, God is my witness. I've never come near crime again. I repented from that day. Nobody came to preach to me. Nobody came to talk to me. I was there fighting every day to survive. We have so many groups in the prison. Battle, training, lifting up irons and beating somebody almost to death all the time in the prison. That's our, that's my job there. That's what we do. To survive, you have to fight. The white men are so good that they hate black, so we have to adopt the same hatred. But when I found Jesus, I, all those things begin to flee away from me. Because he said, when you resist the devil, it will flee away from you. And once you found Jesus, only every appearance of people cannot stand you. He will not stand. That's how my life got changed. And many of you sit down here thinking that you are a criminal. No. Here is one, but thank God for the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the sanctification. Thank God for the cross of Calvary. Thank God for his mercy.